Good morning, bands. On today's episode, we'll hear from Mitchell. Check out some AP classes. Celebrate Black History Month with our fellow Barons. Watch a promo for I Love You Because. And do some speed dating. I'm Abby Hopkins. And I'm Jay Zimmer. And you're, you're watching, watching BCC TV. Okay, Jay, what's going on in the news this week? A facial reconstruction of the ancient Egyptian queen, Queen Nefertiti, is facing backlash on social media. People are denouncing the bust's white skin color and have called it whitewashing history. The former first couple's official portraits were debuted at the Smithsonian's National Portrait Gallery. Former President Barack Obama was painted by Kendi Wiley, and former First Lady Michelle Obama was painted by Amy Sherald. The paintings are the first presidential portraits by African-American artists to enter the gallery. Marvel's Black Panther finally made its debut last night. But advanced ticket sales on Fandango were already outpacing all other superhero films. In BCC News, after a great spirit week, we end the first week of Charity Month with a hype pep rally. And to top it off, Monday is President's Day, so enjoy your three-day weekend. Worried about what you're going to eat for dinner on Tuesday? Well, now dinner is not show problem. Let us walk out with the class of 2021 at the Bethesda Chipotle on Old Georgetown Road on Tuesday, February 20th from 4 to 8 p.m. Make sure to mention the class of 2021 at the register in order to support your favorite freshman SGA. The MYP Project exhibition will be held next Thursday, February 22nd, from 7 to 8 p.m. in the Art Atrium and Cyber Cafe. I sure love a good love story. Then you should most definitely come and see I Love You Because next Friday. Here's a quick promo for the student-directed musical. The show is about uh, four, well, it revolves around four different characters. There's Marcy, and there's Austin, and then there's Jeff and Diana. And basically, it, the entire show just goes through their love lives and their chaotic and hectic relationships. And it's actually quite hilarious, the things that they manage to do for each other. And it ends up being a very romantic and funny show. Okay, so the thing that I really like about the show is that um, we're playing to like the sort of 90s, early 2000s vibe, which is really fun because like even in the like apartment, you're seeing like a lot of records and CD players and like there's like old clocks and old telephones and stuff like that. And I just think that it's really fun to watch because it's sort of nostalgic the way that the show like comes across. Um, and then also like once you put all the humor into it, it kind of reminds me of like a sitcom. Yeah, I did not like yeah, that. Yeah, I know. Um, let me try it. Easy. Alright. Another Saturday night. 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 Another Saturday night in New York. Be sure to come out next Friday to support your fellow bands and the theater program. The entire world has been shaped by black innovators, creators, and intellects. Here's a highlight on some of our very own. In Montgomery County, the achievement gap between races has been prevalent for numerous years. The most jarring gaps can be seen in graduation rates and standardized test scores. This disparity has often been attributed to the classroom environment and the school experiences that are subjective to students of color. My teacher, on the very first day, pointed out to the class how unproportionate our class was in terms of gender. And we looked around the room, there were seven girls in the class, and I looked around the room and I saw that I was the only student of color, and I think that's what really stood out to me. Yeah, about like slavery and stuff like that in class, it's kind of awkward like when there's like limited black students in the class and like everyone kind of just like looks around. In my English class in sophomore year, there were only three people of color in the class, which was pretty surprising and also impacted the way that our discussions went whenever we would discuss slavery or any other like or like movements like the civil rights movement, people would always look to me and the other people of color to leave the discussion as if we had some insight that they couldn't understand. Um, white guys in my class said black girls are ugly and ratchet and I was one of the few black kids in the class and no one said anything, said it out loud. Um, so I felt really alone and not even the teacher said anything, he just sent us off to the counselor. 
Despite the obstacles found in their experiences as students, Black and African Americans have and will continue to thrive. Very inspiring. Abby, let me hold a dollar. No. Real quick. All right, all right. Money. Running out of it is the most exercise any of y'all ever get. Money is something a lot of us have weird priorities with. I mean, our generation was willing to spend $120 on Kanye's plain white t-shirt, but when Netflix asks you guys to end your free trial and start paying monthly fees, you're all like, Google search, how to fake your own death, flee the country, and start again with a new identity. And I know what you're thinking, Mitchell, why not just use your friend's Netflix password? You lost me at friends. However, not even our government can handle its money right. It keeps shutting down because of it, which probably shouldn't even be a thing that the government can do. Like, who even added that feature? I mean, it's not like school shuts down regularly unless there's snow or ice or rain or fog or none of those things, but it's the day after the Super Bowl and MCPS is like, you know what, spring break is kind of overrated anyways. I guess money as a whole is just kind of an odd concept, especially nowadays since most of our money is just up in the cloud and we just trust that it's there. So what even is money? To answer this question, I decided to get BCC's thoughts on what money means to us. Okay, I'm going to read a lot of statement about money and you guys are gonna hold up the signs I made during first period to tell me whether you agree or disagree with the statement and why, okay? Do Sounds we have, good. Do we have to reach consensus? No, I'm here for drama. I'm here for conflict. Okay. <laughs> I don't dance now. I make money move. I mean, it depends what type of money and what type of love you're talking, but like, at some point, you know, if it's like a million dollars, a girl can pretend. Oh. You can't buy money. <laughs> and you can't buy love. I purchased my <laughs> wife, Miss Serino. I am not allowed to disclose how much money that was, though. I love you without your money. Oh, thank you. Here comes the money. Money, 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 money. <laughs> more money, more problems. Amen to that. Yeah, move on. Next. Pound. Well, yeah, me too. I think, like, to a certain extent, like, if you're broke, that sucks. Right. Well, I spend almost all of my money on sweet green, so that's a possession, I guess. Like, if you look at my bank statement, it's just all sweet green. So I would prefer the experience of eating the sweet green <laughs> that you're actually truly spending your money on. Okay, I agree. As the cliche says, you know, you can't take it with you when you're gone. So I was just gonna say the same thing. A funeral shroud has no pockets. There you go. I feel like they coincide with one another. For example, when I bought my Hello Kitty watch, that was a possession, but the experience was heartbreak when it broke. I guess the moral of the story is, in today's world, it can seem as though the amount of money you have defines you. And it does. As the old saying goes, if you're, you're broke, broke that, that sucks. sucks. In all seriousness, there's a much wiser quote I'd like to share with you all before I say goodbye, and here it is. Make your money work for you, don't work for your money. Amen. Back to you, Abby and Jay. Woo! <laughs> Great investigative work as always, Mitch. As course registration comes to a close, check out these AP classes in case you'd like to make a few changes to your schedule next year. Hi, I'm Mia Schofer, and I am a counselor and the AP coordinator. And today I want to talk a little bit about the AP program. I think that the AP courses are more standalone classes. Um, a student might choose to have one particular class and really go deeply into that particular subject as opposed to the AP program or the IB program that works more in conjunction all together as one unit. I think that one of the best courses that we have to offer is AP Lang. That class really helps students learn their writing skills and develops really strong writers and that is a perfect class for students to prepare themselves for college. The other class that I really love in the AP program is AP Environmental Science. I see students that really, really love the topic um, and the 
things that they're learning about the environment. It's just an exciting, exciting class. My favorite part of the AP classes are probably the, uh, the rigor and the challenge of them providing me with a really great uh, basis of what college is going to be like, helping me prepare for all the college classes I'm going to take. I think what I like most about my AP classes um, is the fact that you have a tight-knit group of people who they all understand the exact problems that you're going through in terms of just specifically that class. And I would say like the best thing about them is that it gives teachers the freedom to not go along with the county curriculum and sort of teach more to real-world research and expertise. Advice I can give about AP classes is uh, make sure to manage your time well and uh, stay on top of the reading. Read the textbook. Um, notes, while they're annoying, are really helpful for when you're studying for the test at the end of the year. Don't forget Barron's AP exam registration is happening. Be sure to talk to your counselor about registering these classes into your schedule for next year. Charity Month is off to a great start. Thanks for showing your Barron pride with the Spirit Days this week, Barron's. Keep that energy going for the pep rally today, guys. Let's check in with our SGA president for a special announcement. Hey, Barron's. Throughout the week, we've shown our incredible Baron pride, wearing pajamas, Maryland colors, all pink, jerseys, and today, blue and gold. Now it's time for us to show our commitment to others. We have our task cut out for us. This year, we will be supporting Save the Children, an international charity that seeks to promote access to a safe and meaningful education to children around the world. It's impossible to understand the impact that BCC could have on the lives of these children without first understanding the children. This week, I bring you the story of Rula. Rula was only four years old when an airstrike hit her school in Syria, killing virtually all of her classmates but sparing her. Rula and her family were no longer safe in Syria and moved to the nearby city of Raqqa in hopes of a better life. They were sorely disappointed. There was barely enough food and water to survive, and no electricity at all. Rula and her family have been on the move ever since, going from Syria to Turkey and then to Greece. Rula hasn't been to school in five years. We have the power to change this. We have the power to make sure that Rula and her sisters and countless other kids like them receive the education that's their right. As we kick off Charity Month today, with our pep rallies and our student versus staff basketball game after school, Remember that this is our fight. Fixing this problem is on us. A small donation on your part could change lives. So let's get busy. Thanks for that, Vikram. Playoffs are here. What's new with Barron Athletics this week, Maya and Joe? Hey, Barron. I'm back with another week of sports. And in indoor news, a plethora of runners made states after a grueling regional meet on a basketball court up in Baltimore. From sprinters Samaya Bernardo and Shelby Fountain to distance runners Adam Nakasaka and Josh Fry. We all wish you luck at States next Tuesday, and remember, Nick, keep your mouth shut. Our swim and dive team kicked off Metros last week, and on Friday, senior Maddie Fab with a school record 485.5 points. To quote Jason Blanken, the ladies completed the best night of diving in school history. Congratulations to our d divers, and we wish the swimmers good luck. Last Monday, the wrestling team had a meet against Gaithersburg and Walter Johnson. The boys had an odd score of 0-0 and a tie against Gaithersburg, but took the dub against Walter Johnson 45-24. Fantastic job wrestling, and we wish you luck with the rest of your season. Last Friday, our girls and boys teams had their games against Northwood. The girls team embarrassed them, finishing 75-28. The boys team won a close game, finishing 74-60. They also had games against Sherwood on Tuesday, but the girls and boys teams took the dub. With the win over the Sherwood on Tuesday, our girls team clinched the number one seed in their section. Both teams have home games against RM tonight and senior night. Girls start at 5.30, boys at 7.15. Come and show out to both girls and guys and watch them get the dub. That's all there is for this week, Barons. Back to you, Abby and Jay. Thanks for that, Maya and Joe. Well, that's all for this week, Barons. Check back in next Friday for more news, updates, and humor. Keep those standards high, BCC. And keep the air balls in today's student versus staff game low. I'm Abby Hopkins. And I'm Jay Zimmer. And, and we're, we're signing, signing off. off. In B huh? Sorry, his one hair is like coming down. <laughs> <laughs> Someone fixes one hair. It's unfixable. I don't know how. He's just ruined.